the Sarajevo Haggadah has transcended that original purpose. Today, it represents endurance and survival. It symbolizes hope to millions, Jews and non-Jews alike. Not only is it one of the first, if not the only, illuminated Jewish manuscript, but it has also survived a range of trials and tribulations over the centuries. The Sarajevo Haggadah has journeyed all over Europe, coexisting with the cultural wonders of Tarragona and Seville in 14th century Spain. Traveling to Venice in the 16th century and Vienna in the 19th, it endured the horrors of Nazi-occupied Eastern Europe. Surviving through secrecy and love, the Sarajevo Haggadah has traveled throughout Europe, leaving those who met it with the endable life experience. Journey along with us as we travel back in time to the same places and art that crossed the path of the Sarajevo Haggadah. Generally, when we think of illuminated manuscripts, we think of Christian texts rather than Jewish religious texts. It is rare that we see illuminated Jewish manuscripts because the representation of the human form was prohibited by Jewish law. The Sarajevo Haggadah draws on the Gothic style, although it is considerably less decorative and the images appear flatter. When we describe something as Gothic art, it refers to much of the medieval art that grew out of the Byzantine and Romanesque traditions. However, it distinguishes itself from its predecessors by an increase in the naturalism of the figures depicted, as well as an expressive use of line, pattern, and color, which allowed the artists more freedom for expression and interpretation. Illuminated manuscripts represent the most complete record of Gothic imagery, surviving in spite of the fragility of the medium. Traditionally, Gothic art held itself to rigorous religious conventions, mainly allowing for creativity to be expressed in the quality and extravagance of the materials used. Leaving its place of creation, the Haggadah then made its way to 16th century Venice, to the time of the Renaissance, the rebirth of the classical ideals from ancient Rome and Greece. This was the moment that marked the pinnacle of artistic development from this period. Similar to the manuscripts, much of the art produced during the Renaissance served a didactic purpose. The paintings were meant to teach lessons from both the Bible and ancient mythology. In this time, there was no such thing as art for art's sake, or art for beauty alone. Everything told a story both beautiful and important. As well as religious depictions, we begin to see the commission of what is referred to as Venus scenes. These paintings were more sexual and arousing in nature because they featured the female nude. Secular portraiture was brand new in the 15th century. It began with portraits of the patrons of altarpieces and grew to include kings, dukes, and titled women. Portraiture would eventually bloom and grow into a new mode of commissioned works. Renaissance conventions helped audiences to create an emotional connection to these works of art. The three-dimensional feelings to these two-dimensional surfaces felt more authentic to the people who were viewing them. It was during the time of the Renaissance and the High Renaissance that artists began to use their skill and ability to create beauty, to elevate the role of the artist from artisan to a level that put them on par intellectually with writers, philosophers, and poets. Such movements as Rococo, Baroque, Romanticism, Neoclassicism, and Art Nouveau emerged during this time. Romanticism conveyed an expressiveness in form and showed the mood of color as well as developing a freehand method of painting. Neoclassicism displayed heroic figures with dramatic lighting. It exhibited the architecture inspired by the classical past. They focused on the everyday with familiar subject matters, such as cities, landscapes, and ordinary people, instead of gods, saints, and heroes. Impressionists were influenced by photography and created paintings that looked as if they were caught by chance. Post-impressionists continued using the same vivid colors and real-life subjects that impressionists used. However, post-impressionists were drawn to the emphasis of geometric shapes, the distortion of form, and in the use of unnatural or arbitrary colors. It seemed that artists of this time were interested in systematizing and creating a sense of order and structure to explain this new modern world. They were the avant-garde, and they wanted to create vivid, intriguing, and visually compelling works of art. 
Eventually, the avant-garde would push the boundaries of art through expressionism, Dada, and surrealism into complete abstraction. We see the emergence of modernism, full force, developing from the innovations of the avant-garde. During this period of time, we begin to see art and subject matter that is more abstracted in form and in meaning. The bridge portrayed and presented the world from a specific German nationalistic perspective. Much of their work was distorted radically in order to convey an emotional effect and evoke moods and ideas of the newly modern Germany. They sought to portray emotions and subjective interpretations over the idea of creating something aesthetically pleasing, example to their use of arbitrary colors and jarring compositions. Rapidly following them was the Blue Rider, a group of artists from Munich, from Kandinsky to Munter. This group of artists were fundamental to Expressionism, their common goal being a desire to share and express spiritual truths through their art. They believed in the connection between visual art and music, the spiritual and symbolic associations of color, in a spontaneous approach to painting. All art and visual entertainments come from a place of wanting to witness, to be near beautiful things. This is a strong testament to the developments and advancements we have seen in the world of art. Being saved twice by people of different faiths, the Haggadah has stand as a symbol of interfaith cooperation and respect, much like the art of all its time and experiences. On the art that has been shown, please see the list of citations on the library website and also visit your local branch of the Pasadena Public Library.